Hey guys, so I get a lot of people asking me to do a video on object-oriented programming. So I'm going to be doing some tutorials on object-oriented programming, but first I wanted to kind of just go over exactly what object-oriented programming is. I think there's a lot of misconceptions as to what object-oriented programming is, and I just kind of want to clear up a couple things and just kind of give my overview of what of what it is. So object-oriented programming is a design pattern. What does that mean? Well, it means that it's a way of writing software that you choose to do. You don't have to do object-oriented programming. Even if you're using an object-oriented programming language, you don't actually have to write it in an object-oriented way. So object-oriented programming languages are basically built to facilitate the object-oriented paradigm. Um, that'd be languages like you know, C Sharp or Java. And you know it's very object-based and it's very class-based and it's very get and setter based. But there's other languages like JavaScript, for instance, which you can do object-oriented programming in it, or you could even do functional programming in it, which are two completely different ways of writing software. If you're writing in JavaScript a lot, you kind of have to make that decision. Do you want to start writing your software in a functional way or in a object-oriented way? So it's a design pattern. You do not have to necessarily do one or the other. You're not forced to. You could actually mix the two. So what exactly is it? Well, it's a, it's a way of abstracting writing software. <laughs> so basically the software itself is understood and read and executed by a machine and our brains do not think like machines. So it's really hard to think about software in its raw form. So computer scientists over generations decided to abstract that away and make it easier for people to think about writing software. And one of the things that's most intuitive to people are objects. This game controller, for instance, is an object. We know that objects are, there is, there's a lot of similar objects. For instance, this game controller. There's many different types of game controllers, but we know that this one is different than a PS4 controller. So the idea would be this specific game controller belongs to a class, and the class would be called game controllers. And this specific one is an instance of the game controller class, if we're talking in terms of software. So this controller is an instance of the game controller class, and we would call that an object. An object is essentially an instance of a class. The game controller class might have something like a color, um, a console it belongs to, a list of buttons and functions for each button. When we sp make a specific instance of that, that would be the object. So let's say, the game controller class, you have to define a color. Well, in this case, when we create this specific object, we would say the color is white. And then we would have an X button, a Y button, a B button, an A button, etc. It's a specific instance of the class, and we would call that object. So this is an object. Class would be the game controller, the whole umbrella term spectrum of game controllers. And if we were to create a PS4 controller, that would be a different object, both using the same class. And so when we use classes and objects in, in programming, it's exactly like that. We take the idea of an object or a class of objects, something that has similar properties. We would then create instances of that class and then use that in our programming code. And it just makes it a lot easier to think about. But I just wanted to take a minute to kind of go over what object-oriented programming is and then kind of also take a quick second to talk about functional programming. So functional programming is a different way of designing software where you don't mutate data and each function is pure. And what that means is whenever you call a function, it's always going to return the same thing if you give it the same value. Now that's not the case a lot of the times with object-oriented programming because you know you may do an HTTP call in, in a uh, function and it returns something. But in functional programming, you would do an HTTP call and then whatever the response is, you would call the function with that response. It's <laughs> it's semantics, but it really, really matters a lot when you're actually designing big programs. When you decide to do either object-oriented programming or functional programming, one of the things that I like to say that you should think about when making that decision is how much is the data going to be changing throughout the application. If you're just going to be getting data from a database and then setting data in a database, just getting and retrieving and setting, sending it back and just displaying information on a screen, then I would say object-oriented programming is the way to go. But if you're going to be dealing with getting data, having it go through a stream and just do tons of changing and like the data is just transforming, functional programming is the way to go. And I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video because I, like I said, it's really more about the code. But I just kind of wanted to give you guys a good overview of object-oriented programming and kind of just dip 
our fingers in the idea of functional programming as well. So if you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.